I'm, I'm more skeptical. I would wait to applaud, but that's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> nice of you nonetheless. Um, this is a uh, story of intersecting journeys, and I want to share some of those intersecting journeys with you, uh, the most important of which is a journey of life. And so we're looking um, at a journey of some 60 years of art and literary production uh, from a major artist who's been active here in the city for uh, most of his career. So that's essentially what we're going to be doing is touring aspects of the exhibition uh, and talking a little bit about some of the major preoccupations of Ron Gyozo Spicket during the time, during the course of his career so far. Um, and we're starting here in front of the entranceway and I want to uh, just point to a couple of things because I think these are going to be important as we talk uh, during uh, the course of the tour. Um, you see these uh, two photographs here. By the way, these photographs are taken by Arthur Nishimura uh, of his friend uh, Gyozo. Uh, and they are showing um, Gyozo in his Buddhist uh, robes. So he is actually an ordained Buddhist lay uh, priest. And this has been a very important part of his journey. In fact, it's had a great deal, uh, a great effect on the way he thought about his visual art during the course of uh, his career. So we start here with this introduction to his, uh, to his work. What I'd like to do is invite you to come through. Now, actually, we are fairly numerous, uh, which is wonderful. Um, and I am going to be pointing to some works uh, fairly specifically. So I'd invite you to uh, think a little bit as if we were in an elevator in social sciences. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and we can get cozy, uh, very cozy in social sciences, so we don't need to be uh, museum polite. I think we can get a little closer and, and we'll be just fine uh, with respect to that. I should say that uh, I'm perfectly happy to entertain comments and questions as we're going through. If you do make those, try to catch my eye and then um, if you could make it loud enough so that we can pick it up on the mic, that would be helpful. I'm also happy to stay at the end and if there are any questions at that point, um, please feel free but don't feel that it needs to be particularly formal. Uh, I just want to uh, share some of the excitement that I've experienced in working on this project, which has uh, consumed a lot of my energy over the last five years. So it's really been wonderful, and to have you here is uh, very rewarding. So let's uh, go through, please. The uh, noted American art critic Clement Greenberg uh, came west to Calgary on a couple of occasions and he met um, Ron Spickett um, as he was known in those years. Uh, the local artists were a little bit dubious about having the New York guru come and tell them what they should or should not paint. And uh, Gyozo, I'm going to refer to him as Gyozo in the present tense and Ron in the past tense, Gyozo remembered that Greenberg said, art feeds on art. And uh, at the time, Ron Spickett responded to him, art feeds on nature, not just natural forms, but human forms and natural processes. And as I introduce his work to you, I think that uh, preoccupation with nature and with the human being are really central to understanding his work. Indeed, uh, when he came to describe it to me a couple of years ago, when he was trying to sum things up, he said that, his sole preoccupation or his, his abiding preoccupation throughout his career had been the human condition uh, and its manifest and manifold preoccupations. So if you could keep that as, as an umbrella concept as we're going through the work, I think that will help us. I mentioned to you that he had spent most of his career uh, in Calgary. However, he was born in Regina. Uh, and there he showed a precocious interest in and a gift for art. Uh, and we're told in some of the, uh, the uh, clippings that are in his personal papers that he won an art uh, competition when he was about uh, eight years of age. Uh, and so he was uh, very um, precocious in terms of his interest in art. 
I was able to find that um, he had actually started to do his professional artwork when he was 16. He was working as a, um, uh, as a copy boy for the Regina Leader Post, then and now the leading newspaper in the city. And apparently what he would do is he would um, drop an editorial cartoon on the editor's desk uh, and the editor would harumph and would say, <clears throat> not now, Spicket, not yet, Spicket, and would you know, throw it back his way. But after um, a couple of times, I think the editor was becoming impressed. So when, uh, when Ron Spicket was only 16 years of age, um, he started to have editorial cartoons published in the Regina Leader Post. And if you're interested, we've got a couple of those reproduced in the book. Um, very early on, this interest in the human being and in relationships was evident in these editorial cartoons. So what he liked to do is um, um, humorous situations that would allow him to um, showcase um, political events or, or, or one thing or another that would, you know, show life as it was. So it was obvious then that for him, art was about describing conditions of life. Really, that's pretty much the way I describe it. Now, what happened was, uh, very, um, right about the same time then, when he was working at the Regina Leader Post, uh, actually a couple years later, um, he uh, enrolled in the uh, Naval Reserve and actually spent several years in the Canadian Navy. <clears throat> and he was overseas. Uh, uh, and this was an opportunity then that got him out of a rather um, narrow um, setting and opened up his eyes to other ways of seeing, literally. And it's interesting that he uh, mentioned to me fairly recently that his interest in Buddhism started right then. Uh, and he describes having been on watch um, on a ship and having remembered uh, or looking out at the, uh, you know, the waves uh, and saying, there's something about this that I want to experience more. And he says, I wonder why the other sailors don't think this way. I wonder why they don't have these concerns. And so this became his, um, you know, that was the genesis of the interest in Buddhism. What happened after World War II is that he came out west here to Calgary and he enrolled in the Provincial Institute of Technology and Art, which is the forerunner to ACAD, or the Alberta College of Art and Design. And at that time, it was a really progressive place. There were a lot of very good teachers working there, and there was a real spirit of camaraderie in the place. Um, Buck Kerr, for example, was teaching there, and he specialized in mural painting. So there was a lot of uh, opportunities for young students to, um, to learn their craft. Um, so sometimes people ask me, well, why would he come to Calgary? And in fact, it was a logical place for him to come. Uh, and he pursued his studies here, uh, and he studied anatomy, he studied mural painting, he studied oil painting. So essentially, that early natural gift that he had in uh, sketching was given some form and some substance by his uh, scholarly or his, his academic training. If it's possible for you, I'm going to ask you to turn your view this way to the corner. <clears throat> because these two works here are the uh, <laughs> earliest, thank you David, <laughs> these are the earliest works in the show. These are from about 1948, 1949. And I'm going to go through if I can. Some of you who don't have stools are going to think the others are very smart about room four. Um, these are actually uh, not Calgary subjects. These are Toronto subjects because shortly after graduation, he moved down to Toronto. And uh, as was typical of many artists during this period, he, was, um, he had several day jobs um, and then he would try to do art more or less on the side. It was very difficult to become a professional full-time artist during this time. He was also doing window display and he was doing commercial art. So he was uh, really a uh, very broadly based artist. And these then are subjects of Toronto